Okie dokie, welcome to my Joseki Lecture 17. Uh, in the last lecture, we covered uh, a niche variation uh, resulting from the main variation is when white pushes here. Uh, instead of making the tanuki, white decides to push once more. And hoping for black to hane at h4. Um, so I covered this variation uh, in detail. So uh, white can cut here and hoping for black to go for uh, this one. So uh, this would be actually a great fight uh, moving on for for white. Uh, the reason being that now the N3 honey and uh, the kill in the corner becomes a Mi'i. Uh, we talked about why black cannot block here because so many weaknesses, right? So Y will first cut here, uh, and then uh, there's a cut over here, uh, there's a push here, and then uh, there is an extension over here. So uh, Black's four stones are in trouble, and then there's a P3, that's a very serious weakness. And also these three guys are not settled. Uh, very, very difficult for Black. Uh, because of this Q4 stone is not really helping the fight. So I had a, one of my viewers ask me, well, this is what happens when black has a stone at Q4. So let's change scenario, right? Like, so let's, <clears throat> by the way, if you want to check the very detailed fight of, of this one, uh, just go back to my Joseki lecture 16. That's covered in detail. So we're going to change the setting a little bit. Um, I'm going to move our stone to Q3, and then uh, we'll see if that affects anything, right? To thoroughly understand uh, the variation, <clears throat> the variation about H3 cut. So uh, would, eight, would Q3 affect our situation? That's a great question, right? So uh, let's take a look. So if black does exactly the same thing, Okay, we're going to crawl and realize that black cannot block when he has three. So uh, we can cut here and then uh, this is uh, going to be game over right there. So that's not going to work out. White will extend one more time. Uh, sorry, black extends and white crawls. And then the viewer is asking, uh, can we block here at N2? So first of all, if black extends, White can just crawl once more and then come back. And as we can see, white has one, two, three, four, five, six. Black has one, two, three, four, five liberty. So very likely that black is going to lose the corner, right? So, so our key issue is about whether black can block here at N2 and try to kill white. So the answer to that is we will check it out. So um, white will cut at N3 right now, and now black um, black needs to extend, right? By He needs to save these stones first. Uh, and now white can push here at O3. So, uh, so this is threatening to play P2. If black just extends at P2, uh, that's immediately uh, game over. So white will push here. Black needs to extend, and then white will honey. And uh, very easy to see that these four guys are dead. And so black's most resilient defense is by squeezing white's liberty. So at this point, um, white can cut here at j4. Um, so Black is forced to extend, um, and now this is still an issue, right? So white can uh, block at j5. Uh, realize black cannot really do that because these three guys got laddered. Black needs to extend, and white will play the m3 once more, and then Black seems to have something over here because uh, anything else he plays, this is uh, immediately game over. If black 
uh, plays out this one. He says, hey, I'm going to use this Atari. Uh, we're going to have a very, very uh, good exercise for ladder, right? So, and now as we can see, black is going to be laddered this way. And that's game over right there. So what else can uh, black struggle? So if black plays this one, uh, white, white will turn here first. And, uh, <clears throat> and this is still a very, very difficult fight. Uh, so if, uh, if black plays out this one, uh, we can Atari here again. Um, so, so actually, uh, so when, when black plays this one, we can, we can already exchange this one, right? It's always good to exchange. Uh, so, so black does not have the choice to really trade over here. So we Atari here first, and then we will turn, uh, that's, that will result in the same thing. And then, uh, black will play the P3, uh, and now um, <clears throat> white obviously has a few options. So um, if you're a bit worried about, uh, if, if you worry about this is not going to become a sente because uh, black can simply capture our stones and he's going to gain a lot of influence. So that's no problem. White can consider this M4 Atari to prevent that from happening. So it's Black's turn. We said that this is not going to work out because of the ladder. All right, so this is going to be laddered. So Black only has one choice, that is the Atari at K4. So this variation is slightly more complicated uh, because now White will run. Black pretty much has to Atari to get him out, and then White will run. Uh, and now. Uh, we're threatening to capture these guys. He needs to push at h6, putting max pressure onto white. And the most important move for white to play is to extend at j7. Um, so now we can see that black is in all sorts of trouble, right? So first of all, uh, these three guys are in trouble. Um, if black just goes ahead and try to kill the side, uh, white has a net over here at uh, j6 and uh, this is uh, this is game over right so if black extends white will follow up and if black plays this one uh, that's a good time for you to exercise you can put uh, you can pause your video and see what can white do to kill black and the answer is going to be this uh, push right so a very very important shape move uh, at this point, uh, this is just like any move just kills black, right? So white can just capture it like this. That's game over. So basically, this G7 net and this L6 net is in a MI situation because of white's very patient J7 extension, right? If 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 white hurries, so this is why fighting is very important. If white just hurries like this and says hey, look, I'm going to do this, you know, like, and, and I'll try to capture you like this. It probably uh, works as well, right? So, yeah, there, there are many ways to for it to work. But but uh, I think the most, uh, the clearest way that you can uh, make this work is to uh, simply extend uh, at J7, right? So that creates a MI situation. Uh, and that's pretty much a game over for black. All right, so I spent a lot of time covering uh, the uh, basically this cut, right? I said that if even if black has a stone at Q3, it doesn't really matter um, because because of the variation I just mentioned and. Um, so, so you might be wondering, so uh, when is the time that this cut is not going to work? Well, is when black has 
a stone at p3. Let's say this is the Joseki that he chose. He has chosen, uh, and uh, we just quickly go back to go back to here. If white just keeps playing the variation now, black can block at n2, and now there's absolutely no problem. Why? Because if white cuts. Uh, these two stones get laddered. So, and, and white loses the liberty fight in here uh, against the corner. So, so in that case, white's cut is not going to work, which means white should not push at g4. This is going to be a bad move, right? Instead, if you really want influence, you should play h5. So, if black has any third line stone, third line stone, very important, not fourth line stone, third line stone that is p3 or closer towards the left side uh, this push is a legit move uh, sorry this this move this p this g4 is not a legit move if it's closer to the left side however if the stone is at q3 right uh, that's not going to be a problem so this cut will still work for white and the reason is is that at this point is after four extensions black and block here and that's the most important uh important key point because now white has we we limit white's liberty at five and we have uh we have five and more because because now white has no way to do this because we can capture him so white needs to play a move like this and we have five white have five and then we, we play first, so we will likely win the Liberty fight. So I hope that that's clear and that answers uh, the question. Uh, it, I, I think it's worth the time for me to uh, talk about this variation in details um, because, because then you can feel very, very comfortable, very confident to play it out uh, in your tournaments or uh, casual games. Um, you'll feel very comfortable uh, because you know pretty much everything uh, about this G4. So hopefully that becomes your, uh, your move, your weapon in the repertoire. So uh, today we will obviously talk about uh, something else. Um, so we will wrap up basically the Kema defense and move on to something else. So this is going to be the last video on Kema defense. I hope, uh, unless you have any more questions about the Kema defense. Uh, so black attaches and then white will block at C3. Uh, and uh, the variation that is left is when white connects and descend at B3. So this is a main variation uh, as well. So if you have watched uh, the second game between Kojie and AlphaGo, uh, this is what is played. And uh, the correct move for black to play is to push up at f4. Uh, this is uh, not only gaining influence towards the right side, but also putting pressure onto uh, white's three stones. White will follow up with the peep here at g2. Uh, so this is a very good move, and this is a very annoying move as well. Um, so, so if you don't, um, if you don't like complication, uh, because if you have watched the second game between Koji and AlphaGo, uh, I can just quickly uh, play it out. So uh, White decides to get out because now White cannot cut. He does not have enough liberty yet. White crawls and then black cuts here. So AlphaGo played the cut. White decides to play the B4. And then AlphaGo played a very famous jump at K3. And, uh, and Koje pushed at, at G3. And after that, uh, black decides to flip Atari at D5. So it's very, very... Um, how, how can you say it? The, the order is so, so important uh, that you cannot really um, neglect the order. So, and then black extends. 
Uh, and here Koja decides to Tanuki, which is uh, an excellent choice. Uh, but if Koja decides to uh, keep playing, likely it's going to go like this, and then um, and then white needs to kill the four stones because the push no longer works because black comes out with an Atari uh, and then with a block and then white dies. So white needs to play this one and uh, although white got a large corner, black got himself a very strong shape towards the right side as well as a sente more importantly. So this would be slightly favorable for black. So that's what's played in the game. Uh, and, um, and I don't really recommend my viewers to remember that order. It's, it's way too much uh, things that you have to study for that variation. Uh, instead, I recommend my viewers just to connect at F2, which is the most intuitive um, way of playing. Um, and uh, and why not just play very solid? Uh, you know, opponents looking at a weakness, we fix that, and then we look for opportunities. White's best move here is to split at L3, um, and then Black blocks uh, the corner as well as protecting territory. Uh, White will play out the H3, and then Black has an excellent move at K4. Uh, and at this point, uh, the game is pretty much equal, right? So I'm just going to play out a few uh, few AI recommended moves. Uh, so at this point, uh, the game is going to be uh, equal because Black's group is pretty much settled with all these moves. Uh, black strength in the corner, white strength in both groups, uh, and white now has the sente. Uh, so this is uh, pretty much a very, very equal game moving on. So that's how you would play out as black. And I, that's that's how I recommend you to play out as black. And obviously, white can choose this h3 variation, which is more aggressive. It's not letting you uh, settle. Uh, if white plays out the h3, uh, black is going to pincer at l3, right? So if you... If you get you get rid of my roots, I will play a counterattack to get rid of your roots. So now we're pretty much at a point where um, this is how you should play out uh, for both sides. Uh, and at this point, I think Black can uh, turn the direction here at, at H9. Uh, so now the game is going to keep moving on. Uh, both sides have worries and have concerns. Uh, Black is not completely alive. There's some cutting points. Uh, white is not super strong to make this cut happen right away. Uh, so likely he needs to start running. Uh, Black can just uh, hop back like this or like that to gain territory. Uh, and uh, that's just a fighting game, right? I am not settled. Uh, so, uh, so is not your group. So this is just... Uh, concerns for concerns, uh, it's a dynamic, uh, dynamically equal uh, position for both sides. Uh, so that's how you would handle uh, how you would handle the situation. So uh, just a quick recap: um, Black's gonna. All right, let's go back from the beginning. Obviously, we approach the Kema defense, double honey. Uh, always the main variation and white decides to instead of pushing on top he decides to ma more territorial uh, which is excellent uh, black pushes and then white decides to uh, annoy black with this uh, and I said the recommendation I have is for you to simply connect white's optimal variations play l3 black will uh, attack from the other side and then white plays out this one uh, black make use of white's shape to quickly settle himself like this uh, and this is uh, the main variation that I recommend to uh, my viewers. In case white decides to not play the main variation, 
uh, he's going to play the Kosumi, immediately attacking black, nothing to worry about, black keeps an eye on white's weakness and makes counterattack, and then both sides start to uh, run, uh, and black now turns over here, uh, and the game is going to be uh, pretty much equal uh, at this point as well. All right, so uh, this is pretty much the content for uh, the Kema defense. So we spend quite a few lectures on it because it's it's uh, like the most popular uh, and most common uh, Josekis. Uh, so next lecture, we'll move on to something else uh, that is also very common and popular. Uh, but just for now, uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and uh, give a like to the video. And uh, I will talk to you guys next time.